Hi, this is Diane. Welcome to Just Kidding Around. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, guys, there's a huge echo in here. That I, monitor's too high. Yeah. Okay, so Sorry. hopefully that's not affecting the sound coming through to our viewership. Thank you for joining us. And uh, each week we introduce our home viewership to different crafts and hobbies, which can be enjoyed by the entire family. This week, we are excited and also honored to have Mr. Jeff Evans. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for having me back. It's been a few years since I did another science project. Uh, yeah, we're thrilled to have you back. We heard a lot of comments from about the first show, and people really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to find out what, what this is all about. Well, this Ooh. just says science, I think. And of course, it's dry ice. And I've got another chunk here. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. And it's very cold. It's 109 degrees below zero, so you have to wear gloves when you handle it. And they don't sell it to miners. A couple of interesting facts. You can see that we've got hot water in this container, and then the, the dry ice bubbles over. So dry ice is denser than air, and that's why it kind of flows over the sides of the container. And if you've ever been in a haunted house and you've seen fog flowing along the ground, it's probably carbon dioxide. And amazing fact, if you light a candle and lower it inside of this container, the candle will go right out. Whoa. And that's because a flame needs oxygen to burn, and of course there's no oxygen inside of the container right now. Mm -hmm. So they also make fire extinguishers that use carbon dioxide instead of chemicals. So just wow. a little fun fact to file away. I didn't realize it was 109 degrees below zero. Yeah, and I've actually wow. burned my finger. They call it a No burn. wonder. Yeah, yeah, and they don't sell it to miners, huh? So how did you get interested in science? I've been doing magic shows since I was 12 years old, and I've been doing the science shows since about 1996. Okay. So. Were you a big science fan when you were in school? It's fascinating. You know, anything that looks like magic can probably be explained by science. And throughout history, a lot of magicians have used scientific principles for their magic shows. Mm -hmm. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. Yeah, so the first thing we're gonna this learn is, is a yeah. simple trick that you can do at your own home. All you need is your favorite bubbly beverage and some raisins, and I call it hypnotizing <laughs> raisins. Can we slide that over just can a little bit? Can we slide so this? Do you want to? Are we done with this? Yeah, now? actually, if we can. Well, have that, then we could have somebody. Have maybe from the audience. Could somebody from the audience come and take our little bowl away? Thank you. So this is a quick demonstration of center of mass. I have a little wooden device, and and I bought this, but it'd be easy to make. Basically, the the leader. You bought this two by four. Okay. Okay, I've got it, I've got it. You got it? Oh, okay, I'm, okay. <laughs> oh! So basically the center of mass of this arrangement is right at this point, and that's where, that's where it balances. And it doesn't look like it's very steady, but it's actually a little, it's a little more stable than it looks. Wow, you know, that kind of explains some sculptures I've seen. One in particular near the Science Center in Seattle, that orange sculpture. That's balancing? You ever seen it? Yeah, no. it's pretty amazing. Next, it next time you go to Science Center, you should look for that. Yeah. So here we go, Hip hypnotize raisins. When you do this, make sure you use pop that's brand new, that's just been opened, so it has a lot of the fizz to it. And this is gonna be primary grade science. Very simple. Tell your friends that you've learned the art of hypnotizing raisins. <laughs> it just sounds funny. And Diane, I'll let you do this. There's some raisins and okay. just drop them all inside. All of them, one at a time? Drop them all inside. They're hypnotized? They're gonna be. I don't see anything, oh. So here's where I like to use my Jedi mind powers to project them to make the raisins slowly begin to rise to the surface. And the reason you want to use raisins is that raisins have little ridges, and that's where the bubbles can attach ah. to the ridges. And once they rise to the top, it the bubbles them up pop, there. and then they're less buoyant than the water, and they drop down to the bottom. All right, we can move that over there. Quick little bit of science. <laughs> We're done hypnotizing the yeah. raisins. They're coming up and dropping down. They look like dancing raisins to me, I don't know. And this is a demonstration in 
densities. So I have three containers. Each one has some food coloring added to it. Each one is water, but there's something a little bit special about each one of the containers. I also have three hard-boiled eggs. Oh, by the way, does an egg float in water or sink in water? Hmm, I think we're about to find out. S floats. <laughs> when you dye Easter sinks. eggs. Well, sinks. <laughs> All right, so that egg's going to be floating on top. Okay. This egg oh, is going to be sitting right okay. on the ground. And this egg will remain suspended in <gasps> mid-water. Oh, I wonder if the cameras are seeing that. So what's the difference? The difference is that this is regular water with food coloring. Oh. This is water that has a lot of sugar dissolved in it. Oh. And when I mean a lot, I mean there's probably three or four cups of sugar in there okay. and then some red food coloring. So this is like Syrup? in salt water, things float easier in salt water. In mm -hmm. this case, I use sugar. And this is kind of special. It's half and half. The bottom section is sugar water okay. and then the top half, half is regular water. Tap water. So if you want to make this demonstration on your own, uh -huh. make the sugar solution, make it super saturated until no more sugar dissolves in. Okay. Half of it is the sugar water. Then I take a piece of wax paper, lay the wax paper in, pour the regular water on top. I don't just dump the regular water in because it would cause the layers to mix. Is that sitting on wax paper? No, the wax oh. paper's not in there now. Okay, so you took it out. But it acts like it's sitting on that a thicker solution. It is. That's I mean, exactly what You it's can't happening. see the solution. Well, if you get right oh, on the edge, I you am can. seeing the more saturated. Yes, but that makes it interesting anyway. It's sort of a little spacey look, yeah. you know, floating out in there. Wow. So I've been doing this demonstration in my science magic workshops for years, but then uh, recently I was online at Steve Spangler Science. Uh -huh. uh, has got, he's got a lot of great videos. And I, I discovered uh -huh. this next demo that'll look exactly the same, but it's a totally different principle. You need some Pyrex baking dishes and Wesson oil. And it turns out that someone discovered that Wesson oil has the same index of refraction as Pyrex. Oh, God. So what this means is that when the two are in a container, uh -huh. this is Pyrex, but it, this, the outside container doesn't need to be. Uh -huh. But when Pyrex goes into Wesson oil, it becomes invisible. Oh almost invisible. Oh. So I'm going to put this inside. I'm going to uh -huh. flip it upside down. Did a magician figure this out for a magic I, trick? I have no idea. <laughs> so now my hands are totally oily. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Do you got something to wipe them on? I don't. <laughs> Jeff, you think of everything. I know, except you that. You think of everything. So if the camera can kind of zoom in on that, I think you'll see that it's practically invisible. Do you know what? I might unmic myself and go get, do you want me to get something for you? You know what? I've got something okay. right here. What do you got? Oh, Whew. my goodness. You think of everything. Okay. Now you yeah. can take that eight ball and oh. set it right on top of that container. Oh, now I get the oily hands. Oh, no. I'm gonna, can yeah, I just drop it? If there it? aren't any paper towels, we could probably use a paper towel. Can I you drop can, it? I yeah, don't want to break drop it. I don't want to break it, but I don't want You're not want... going to break it. Oh. So that looks kind of weird, but. Nevertheless, in real life, an eight ball is not going to do that in a oh, container. Oh, it's going to drop to the oil. bottom. Yeah. But so I don't know what the like angle's like, trick. but. Oh, someone from the audience. I think that's Rose. Oh my gosh. How did she, how did you know? Yeah, bring that's it on up. That's kind of like Thanks. magic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Much. Oh, and could you very carefully. <laughs> what? <laughs> take these, now, that we're, now that we're done with it. I shouldn't have filled it so full. Oh, Thanks. Thank you. All right, so let's move right along to more science magic you can do in your own home. Do you want what, the, thank you. Did, are you all done with it? All done. Good? Okay. Check that out. Make sure that's a real glass of water. That's a real glass of water. I like to tell people that my superpower is that I can control water. <laughs> I can control whether water spills. I can, sometimes I can walk on water. I, I, I'm I can. anxious to I see. I'm well, anxious. Well, in the winter, if it's been long, cold for many days, I can walk on water. Oh. 
I'm going to I'm going to flip this glass of water upside down without spilling any of the water. Now there's a couple ways of doing it. One way is by using centripetal force and swinging it in a wide arc. And the other method Got any glue there? <laughs> no glue. No glue. Just a little bit of air pressure. I'm going to get this ready. Uh. <gasps> okay. Uh. So the reason this works is that air has just enough pressure to keep the postcard uh. almost, almost. <laughs> Okay, we'll put well, that away. <laughs> but that shows us it really works, you know. It does. It, By it spilling usually, it, we know there's real water in there. It's real water, absolutely. <laughs> and now we cleaned our... Boy, I'm glad she brought that in. I'm glad too. <laughs> Is this a little birthday cake? Now? This is, actually, this is the way we're going to do the second half of the trick. Pour a little bit of water into a flat pan. Okay. Now anybody can do this at home, right? Yeah, this is a great one to do at home okay. because nothing will get too messy. Nothing's going to spill. But on the this last one. one they could have tried at home too. Yeah. Just maybe over a sink or With something. With a little more practice. Yeah. Or do it outside. Oh, I've yeah. Got a coin, and we'll put it in the container. Ideally, you want the coin just under, underneath the water. And then a little bit of pepper goes on top <laughs> of the water. Uh, okay. And this has set up the challenge. The challenge <laughs> is how can we remove the coin from the container with our fingers, but without getting our fingers wet? I mean, without getting any pepper on either the coin or on your fingers. Okay. No, but I'm smelling that pepper. Whew. I want the camera to kind of zoom. So do I have to, to answer zoom. that? You don't Are we have waiting to answer for a it. camera to kind of get in there, yeah, get a let's close up? Get a real close up. Hopefully you can see the layer of pepper on top of, of the container. There's a lot of pepper on there, just floating and around. And here I go, nothing in my hands. I'm going to reach in. I'm going to grab the coin. I uh -huh. will not let any pepper get on my fingers or on the coin after okay. I take the coin out. Here we go. <gasps> All right, I got it. Why did that happen? That happened because I touched my finger to a little bit of oh, dishwashing yeah. solution. Oh, that's what that was. And technically what it does is it breaks the surface tension, oh. and all of the pepper just moves away. Dissipated, Almost wow. like magic. Now I'm gonna put the just cool to coin see. back inside, and we're gonna do the trick again, but this time there's a new challenge. The challenge is how can we remove the coin from the container with your fingers, mm -hmm. but without getting your fingers wet? Oil. No? Maybe you could like coat your hand with oil, yeah. or you could freeze the water, make it an ice cube. Yeah. Or you could evaporate the water. Uh-oh. <coughs> I'm sorry, that, it's okay. <laughs> that pepper. Oh, no, I'm not sorry. sick. I just, uh, every once in a while, I'll try not to breathe, and then I'll be fine. Or we can use these little birthday candles. Oh, that's what you want to light? Are these the candles? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they should be fine. So when a flame burns, it's using oxygen and it's also creating heat. And you also want to have a glass. Usually I would say use a real glass, but this plastic glass will work too. What's going to happen, as soon as I let the glass go and it comes in contact with the water, it's going to create a suction. Okay. And if you look right there, you can see all the water being drawn up inside of the glass. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's how you're going to pick the quarter up? You're going to take yeah. all the water out of that? Now I can reach in. Oh. And rescue the coin. Oh. Voila. And the water, meanwhile, is it, is it going to still go up? Can they see that, do you think, close up? I'm sure they but can. The water's get a good look at that. slowly coming out of this container and up into the glass. And so the bigger container you use, the more water it can suck up. And obviously, the less water you have in the container, the easier it is to get it off the coin. Yeah. And is it going to eventually take all the water out? No, I think most of the suction's gone by now. but. Okay, now it's time for you to learn a magic trick. Okay. We're going to use matches because we've got matches handy, but in real life, if you have toothpicks, toothpicks are great too. I call it the static electricity matches or static electricity toothpicks. So I'll, I'll do it first, and then I'll show you how to do it. Balance it right there. Just getting a little, bit of, light a little bit of static electricity. 
Now you're definitely going to want to zoom in pretty close to that match because as you know, when you have two objects that have the same electrical charge, they, they repel each other. They want nothing to do with each other. And when this match gets close to the other match, oh, ooh, gosh. did you hear that little shock when yeah. it discharged? So here's the truth. There is no static electricity. There's no static oh. discharge. It's all a trick. What I'm doing is you're, you're going to go ahead and zoom in on my fingers. I'm going to hold the match or the toothpick in between my thumb and index finger. And then my second finger, oh. the thumbnail, rests right on top of the end of the match. Uh -huh. And it's going to kind of put pressure on it. Uh -huh. And when it flips off it, it doesn't look like anything. Uh -huh. But that little motion, when it's, it's amplified by the other side, uh -huh. when you put the two together, and it's not real easy because you have to release it at the same time that the two come together. <laughs> but it's pretty impressive. It does. It looks like that is the, uh, but it's actually your finger. Yeah, it's my finger at the back. So why don't you try that? Okay. First try it with just, just the one hand. It's, okay. Again, it's the okay. thumb and index finger grip the match right here, or this. Okay. the toothpick. Okay. And then the second, the the fingernail of the second finger. And that's when I get close to it, right? Yes, that's it, yep. So what I like to do is I kind of balance it on one finger. Okay. So now there's a lot of coordination going on here. Yeah, hey, that's harder than it looks. The other thing you can do? Oh, I got it, I got it. So I'm gonna do this when I get close, right? Except rather than having your hand like this, uh -huh. have it like this. Have it like this? Yeah. Oh, so then it doesn't show. So it goes well, and also the slide it flips of the hand. it up. Nice. Oh, I can go on the road cool. now. I can go on the road with my magic trick. So there's a little bit of pocket hmm. magic, and that trick is from. Do you have a book? Actually, I have DVDs that you can oh. check out from the Timberland Libraries, the Pierce County Libraries, the King County Libraries, Snow yeah. Isle Libraries. And the Lydia Hawk Library. That's right, and some of the local school libraries as well. So oh. all done with stuff you have around the house. So you've made DVDs. All right, let's keep moving along here. Have a ketchup packet inside of a pop bottle. And you're probably wondering, what is a ketchup packet doing inside of a pop bottle? Yeah, I want to know that. And I, I'm going to attempt. But there's water in there, right? Yes, it's totally filled with water. Okay. And ketchup packets float. So that's why it's floating on top. <laughs> but this is a demonstration of okay. psychokinesis, the ability to move objects with your mind. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> so as I concentrate on the ketchup packet, it is slowly becoming heavier. Very slowly becoming oh, heavier. Oh, and your mind's controlling that. That's because you're, you're staring at it. Beginning I'm staring to fall at it. towards the bottom. And that's it's of my the mind container. and my eyes. Kind of like Matilda, only she made things kind of move up. I'm staring at it. I'm making it move down. Wow. And of course, you can <laughs> command it to rise back to the surface again. Wow. You do that have to do a, uh, you have to do a little bit of homework to make this work. You have to find a ketchup container that floats. Now the ketchup containers have a little bubble of air in them, and that's what makes them float. But not all of them float. If yours doesn't float, you have to go Get back to your one. favorite fast food restaurant <laughs> and buy another one. Okay. So I buy a lot of them when I go out to fast food restaurants. And then the secret is that when you press on the outside of the bottle, you can do it. Use two hands. It's, you have to put a bit okay, of pressure I'm gonna on it. I'm going to just stare at it. I'm not going to use okay, my hands. No. I'm just going to stare at it. <gasps> oh, and you know what? I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make it stay, 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 stay. Wow. That's how, that's how powerful my mind is. <laughs> so the science is that when you press on the outside of the bottle, it compresses the bubble of air that's in the package, in the ketchup package. And then as the bubble becomes smaller, then it has less buoyancy and it sinks to the bottom. Do you know something about this container though? It's, it's um, sturdier than most pop bottles. This isn't a pop bottle, is it? It is. It's just it's really full with water. I and that's what makes it full. so strong? Yeah. Oh. How do you get your ideas? Do you make some of these things up? Do you get them online? Do you read books? I didn't make up any of these. I check out a lot of books on science and 
YouTube is also a great way to learn, yeah. learn stuff. Are you on YouTube? I am, yeah. Oh. Yeah, if you just search Jeff Evans Magician, you can yeah. probably find me. can find me there. Postcard for you, postcard for me. The challenge is how can you cut a hole or any sort of an opening in a postcard that you can put your body through, like walk through it, step mm -hmm. through it. Okay, I'm gonna show it. And I'm just gonna following. show you how it's done. And actually, we can both do this together. Let me get together? some scissors. So you take a postcard okay. and fold it in half. Any postcard? Yep. Does it matter if it's a square or a Well, just get as close as you can. Good. Mm -hmm. And take your scissors, and we're going to cut a, a bunch of... Slats? A bunch of lines? lines in it. Yeah, but not all the way to the end. Let's do like oh, eight, eight cuts. Oh, eight? Um, that, actually, what you're doing, you'll end up with a much bigger circle, Six, which is good. Seven, no, I'm gonna do it. Eight. Cool, and then flip it over, and now we're gonna make more cuts coming, sorry, we're gonna make cuts going the other way. Okay, between so them? In between them, but again, don't cut all the way through it. Good. And then open it up. And even though we're using big postcards, if you're really careful, you can even take something the size of a business card. And if you're really careful, you can just <laughs> small, about do this. Yeah. Scissors. So now we have a bunch of cuts. Take your scissors and cut straight down the middle, the middle line that you folded on the first time. But be really careful. You didn't. Start the very first one, though. Okay, so, yeah, let me explain. Don't cut through that end, but start just in. So you will be cutting through slits, and that's fine. So you would start right there. Yeah, but where am I? Aren't they going to fall off? Yeah, but it's okay. Okay. Ooh, seems like, okay, got Good. it. Good, and now you just kind of pull it open. <gasps> Oh, the kids would love that. Then what do you do? Wear as a necklace? You could <laughs> wear it as a necklace. Would? Yeah, now if you ha make enough lines, you can actually put your entire body through it. <laughs> but you could do this with construction paper or anything. Oh, sure. With a bigger piece of paper. Absolutely. Does it have to be like a heavy stock or something? You couldn't do it with typing paper or something. Of you that can, weight, but it would rip easier. Oh, the kids hey, would love this. Hey, but let's keep this. moving on. I'm going to teach Let's put these away. School. We need to... I'm gonna teach these in school. This is kind of along the same lines. Can I get your autograph? Can I get your autograph. Yeah. The reason I want to get your autograph is I want you to know, and I want the viewers to know, mm -hmm. that what I'm about to do is all one piece of paper, and I'm not gonna switch pieces oh. of paper. So let me put your name right there. This right there, at the towards the top? Yeah. And I call this 3D paper. All right, great. Quickly do a little bit of... A little bit of origami. Fold this back the way. And that's for you. Don't me to sign a different piece of paper. Hold on, let me, let me think here. I probably signed it in the wrong spot. No, it's not you. I just totally forgot how that one's supposed to go. Ah, okay, we'll have to, we'll have to switch straight to the grand finale. I think that was part of the trick. I think Can somehow you Can I borrow you're... your bracelet? 
Seriously? Seriously, and stand up for this because this is something that can be a little bit dangerous. You're just gonna have to trust me on this. Is this related to the other trick? <laughs> this is not related to the other trick. I have a glass tied to the end of a string. I've got a, a washer on one end because you're gonna be holding on to the washer and I don't want you to let go of the end of the string and let the glass break. No. Can I, I see your, your bracelet? I took that one off. I, which one or, would oh, work better? Um, Watch probably the bracelet. Does that? It's magnetic. magnetic? Does Perfect. That have Let's to do slide that anything? in there. I just want your bracelet to be near. Okay, right there. So we have a lot of fragile things on the end of this string. And this spoon is going to complete the puzzle. So I want you to hold this in your left hand. I'm going to drape. Can I do it? The anything? glass oh, over the top gosh. of that. Okay, Why don't okay. you hold on to this? And make sure you pull that string over so that we've got, got it hanging in midair. Now you know, glass? you know okay. that if you were to let go of this, that that glass and your bracelet is going to go crashing down towards the table yeah, or the floor. Yeah, break. So you're just going to have to trust me. I'm and not on the count to of three, that I want track. you to hold I'm on tight you. with your left hand. Hold on tight with your left hand, <laughs> okay. but let go of the washer. Just let go of the washer? Let go of the washer, yeah, but make sure you're holding your left hand up high enough. Here? And this is the trick that's going to amaze you. Well, actually, On I the count of three. It. You're saying let go, let go of this? Yeah, I mean, you know, just don't let go, but just kind of move the washer that way. Which oh, direction? I thought you meant let go. Like here? Yeah, so you can see that if you were to let go, you know that that's going to well, land yeah, on the ground. Well, yeah, that's going to land on the ground. Okay, so now hold back a little bit. Hold on tight with your left hand. Okay. And this is science that's going to amaze you and the viewers at home. On the count of three, just let go of the washer. No, but hold on tight to the like, spoon. Just let this out of hold my on. hand. You're going to let go of that, but you're going to hold on tight to the spoon. On the count of three. <sighs> One, two, three. Wow. Oh, that almost You almost have to table. try that at home to believe it. When you do it at home, don't, don't use I a glass. I can't believe that. It's, oh, it wrapped around. I didn't even watch it. My eyes were closed. I was like 99% sure that was going to break on the floor. The first time I thought I did it, I thought the same thing. Oh, my gosh. So do I unwrap it now? You can unwrap it. But now I'm going to hang on to that washer. Wow. So it didn't, did that just add weight to that? What was the point of putting the bracelet on there? Oh, that's just for suspense. Oh, <laughs> nothing to do with anything. Oh, my gosh. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for coming. You bet. Thank you. These were all different tricks. Remember last time we had the ice cubes? Yes. <laughs> we that's a good one. The ice cubes. Yeah, you got a lot of things for me to go home and think about and practice. And actually, if you search for Jeff Evans Science Magic, you can find some other videos online. Okay. So. And I think um, the ending credits, you'll see contact information. on. You have a fan club. Oh, you can find me on Facebook, sure. Yeah. On Facebook, he's got a fan club. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Jeff, for you coming back. Thank you. And if you see Jeffrey, it's because he's all around the county, the state, actually, mm -hmm. aren't you? Performing, uh, performing magic. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks to John Amos for running camera. Thanks to Jerry Jillian and Jim Elder. And thanks, Tom Dubuque, who's right inside there. He directed it. And thank cool. you, Mr. Evans. Thanks. Or Jeff. I don't <laughs> Bye. Join us again for the Just Kenny Round Show. <laughs>